Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Spyro the Dragon. In the last part we went through the boggy, um, so I wouldn't really say sewer light area, but it's basically the, an area like the Bog of Merc in Rayman 3, essentially. And now we're going to go through this, basically like heaven-ish area, where we just go through the clouds, well, not necessarily going through the clouds, but we're up in the sky, and we're going to do some basically really uh, high platforming and um, that's basically what this world entails it's basically your world 7 or your cloud world if if you want to call it that but yeah it these little chicken clock dudes or whatever have sort of a timer basically when you hit them they won't give you gems or anything they won't die instead They'll make like a platform like go down like that, and s basic things like that. So they aren't like too too uh, hard to understand. Like they, it's really easy to know what they what they do like right off the bat. But hey, yeah, you don't need to make this complicated. But again, this isn't this isn't a complicated game in the in the slightest. You should. Re you really shouldn't have a problem with really anything, like, like there are some parts that are kind of stupid, like in the, like the, uh, was it, the treetop level in the last world, but in terms of like learning me mechanics, you really shouldn't have an issue unless like this, is, this could be like your first time playing a video game, but even then, I don't, I don't think you'd have much trouble, but I don't know. Maybe it's because I played this game a lot uh, later. Because I played this game, I've I've only played through this game the first time like a couple years a, a couple years back. So I've already had a lot of experience with gaming just in general. So maybe that has something to do with it. But I don't know, man. Like. I don't think that this is a really difficult game to get a hold of. Like it's very basic. Um, you're pretty much you pretty much know what to do right from the get go. Like oh, it's a collector fun. You have to find gems and you have to find the dragons and the dragon eggs. So you should really be able to get a hold of everything really quickly. If not right, if not then right away probably. But yeah. Now these enemies are kind of annoying because like there's that dude up there that's making them turn from small to big and that can change your strategy drastically because with those like those enemies up there you, I couldn't kill them because they're huge but they also have shields because so neither a charge or a flame will kill them so what we have to do is fly or glide over here and kill this dude so he doesn't turn them back to be not or keep them from turning giant and he's using this little cannon here to do so so what we have to do is what you might have guessed to fail epically like that come on yeah I, I'm pretty sure I was Confused on why I didn't hit that guy because I'm pretty sure this is auto aim. So, so we just have to get back to that guy and do that again. Come on, why isn't it hitting him? There we go. I don't know what that was about. But yeah, we have to kill all these guys too. Nope. Don't make them go back. That's all good. And now I have to save this guy. Ugh! Zikamai. Hello, Spyro. Nicely done. I'll be done when I poke with that nasty war. Oh, you know it, bro. We're getting close to it. Really close now. But yeah. Um. This kind of reminds me of that one world in. Ugh! I hate to bring this up again, but. 
It reminds me of the one of one world in Enter the Dragonfly. I believe it's called Cloud Nine, and I don't remember too much of the le of the level itself, but I do know for a fact that you get the electric breath there, and it was a cloud level, obviously. And yeah, the the, the new breaths you get in four is a nice feature. Like that's one of the best parts of the game of that game. While they don't implement it very well, it's still a nice feature, and it's. It would have been cool to see like them add that in like two or three, but you no, know, these games work fine without them. And it's kind of, those the way they implemented it in four made it so they were really situational, and you didn't really use them in, unless you really had to. And it was that was kind of a problem in my in my opinion, because like most of the time you're just gonna keep using fire. It doesn't really. It doesn't really change a lot, unless you, like, like I said, it's really situational and you r really won't, won't use it unless you can't move on without using it, you know? So I don't know, maybe they, they could have easily done a better job with that, like maybe had some enemies not, um, able to be killed by flames or charging, or some, something, I don't, I don't know, but... Make it so they feel, it feels like you, uh, the other, other, f uh, breaths are more involved. Because they really, they really aren't that useful, to be honest. Alright, but we're making our way through. Almost done with this. I think this is pr most likely the longest it takes for you to get all the gems in the hub world. Considering it's the second to last, it makes sense. And like, we've had big hub worlds so far, but the next one is going to be pretty linear. Like, you only have access to one level at a, at a time, and it doesn't really open up at all. It's like basically one I'll small arena. While chasing Nasty's minions in this world, you must expect the answer. Prepare for what is not there. Okay, so we're missing 10 gems, so wait, let's see where they could be, um, I'm not too sure, but it's probably going to be in a stupid place, like, usually, but, hey, okay, let's see, it's always annoying when you have to find that one gem, or, well, how? Oh wait. Oh no, we've already been there. Um, wait. Um, I'm not sure. Where, where would they be? Can I get up there? But how would I get up there? I'm proof. Hmm. Oh wait. I can see them. I can see gems. Alright, let's get away over here. Alright, so go to the side. Sneaky little buggers. Like, seriously. Haunted Towers. Okay. I forget what this level is, but we'll see what it. We'll see momentarily. Oh, this level, okay. So, well, we can't kill these things yet, so we're gonna have to wait. But, yeah, essentially, we have to deal with these little wizard guys, and we've already fought them before, so you should already know what to do, and just make your way past those little uh, armored dudes, because you can't hurt them just yet. You just kill those guys. And you get a flame charge kiss, um, essentially, which basically makes your flame a bit stronger uh, temporarily, and it makes like it makes things that were hard that were harder to break before easily broken by just one flame attack. So yeah, the ones where you had to get you had to jump to get the gem. 
You can just burn the whole box thing. Um, you don't even need to charge the metal boxes anymore. But anyway, but regardless though, you don't always have this ability with you. Like, like as you're seeing, as you're seeing, it's only available to you for like a good 10 seconds or so. Um, and you have to you have to be pretty quick if you want to be effective with it, as you'll need it for a good chunk of this level level actually. So you want to be fast and efficient with it, and you have to kind of remember where some of those fairies are because if you like don't know where a fairy is and you're finding like a metal uh, like a, an armored enemy, then you could be in trouble. So. Yeah, they're not too hard to remember where they are, and there's only really a couple of them, so it shouldn't be too hard to remember their locations, but yeah. Just kill these guys. I feel I feel like I feel like I can reach that one. I think I can't believe I missed that as well. Jeez. Yeah, I do like the idea of the whole ch flame charge thingy, or whatever you'd call it, and it it gives you a different uh, a different mechanic, I guess, and and it makes you play the game a little bit differently. So it doesn't really hinder your experience either. You're still pretty much playing the same game, just with an added ability, I guess. There we go. It would, it would be great if you could have an infinite flame charge, but yeah, that would easily break the game. Um, I'm pretty sure you could probably find out a way to do that if you like used cheat codes, but I'm not that type of gamer, so like I I know it, at the end of Spyro 2 you get like this flame ball thing ability that you'd get throughout the game, but at the end of the game you can have it forever. So, hey Spyro, all dragons know there's magic in the fairy skills. See what it can do to your power of flame. Yeah, I've already explained that, so you know, that was a pretty worthless uh, time for you to say that stuff. Now, I'm pretty sure we can't reach far, far enough to reach these guys, so we're gonna have to make our way over here. And yep, as I thought, another fairy. Yeah, so the pretty evenly spaced out, so you shouldn't have too many problems. And considering the size of these levels, it really isn't much of a problem to find them to begin with, really. Like, unless you're really, really blind, then you shouldn't really have a problem. And no, I, I mean no offense to actual blind people, if they're actually watching this. But, yeah. Playing the store down, and we're good to go. Yeah, I do like like subtle changes in gameplay like this, where it's not intrusive, but it doesn't feel too little. Like it gives you a little bit more meat for the gameplay, but not too much to make it like a whole, almost in, an entirely different game. It's very like. Spyro 1 adds in very subtle, like, gimmicks, if you can even call them that. And I do like, do really like that about this game. And while it's not easily not the best in the series by a, by a long shot, I still really do appreciate it. Because it, it does try to be different as you go, as you progress through the game. But it still keeps, like, the general formula the same. So it doesn't feel like you're constantly like have being like told to play the game completely differently over and over again, you know? But yeah. Like you, I guess you could make the argument that these future games kinda Hold your horns. Here comes Spyro. Patience with the You'll soon have the opportunity to plan for what who matters most. Nasty door. But yeah, I don't I guess you could make the argument that Spyro 2 and 3 aren't as like easy to go f easy to go through than this game, but they at the same time they don't 
go too far with it. Like, they still keep it, uh, like, simple enough so people can understand it, but they, it's not afraid to do its own thing. Like, Spyro, Spyro 1 set out a stand, well, not really a standard, but it basically set the formula for the series. And Spyro 2 and 3 kind of just, uh, you used that formula and made something even better out of it. Basically taking what was already established and made something great, you know? Like, we had that, we've had that for so many games, like Sonic, Sonic 1, and then we got 2 and 3, which were really, really good, and so on and so forth, like, with Mario, uh, Crash, even, and, yes, a lot of, a lot of franchises start off kind of simple, and then they evolve over time. Let me see here. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to be missing anything. So, I uh, I think we're gonna have to be just hoping that we did good for now. Because I I'm pretty sure we had to use the charge jump to go to our an er, an area where we couldn't reach without it, and that was kind of dumb. Okay. Well, at least we're just back here. Alright, so let's charge that, charge that flame again, kill you again, because you clearly don't belong here. Alright, now these guys, you have to be pretty quick for some of these enemies, because some of them, some of these knights will attack you pretty quickly, so as soon as you, like, as soon as you're, like, you're in their range, just use your flame breath because it would it, it will save you from potentially losing a health bar thing, <laughs> whatever you'd call the health in this game. But yeah, um, let me see here. We're already at the end, but I think there's something. Yeah, we're, there's something we're clearly missing. It's like, look at all that. So let's move, let's get back over here, so, um, right, let's see, let me see, uh, I don't know, let me see if I can do the charge, and I should be able to, like, I think I have an idea what to do, actually, um, let's see if this works, um, right. oh, okay, ah, Dang it. Okay. No, I think I... No. I don't think I have to go around there. I don't think that's ne necessary. So... Let's try this one more time. Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it's kind of hard to... Ugh. There we go. And now we're in this area. Woo! Hopefully there's a this will there's a fairy here because I I don't think we'll be able to break that box either way. Yep, but yeah, we have to, there should be a, a fairy around here because I don't think you can break that metal metal box any other way. And yep, I'm right of clearly because there's a bunch of. Uh, armoured soldiers here, so, yeah, you know what that means. What's down here first? And, of course, it, it's, it just puts me back here. Aish. So now I have to go all the way back and just do that stupid thing again. Thankfully it's nowhere near as annoying as Treetop, because that was just stupid design. <laughs> Thankfully, thankfully here, it's more forgiving, but you still have to be pretty precise considering how small these doors are, so you can easily screw yourself over and just bash into the wall, but at least you don't have, an, have a high chance in dying like you did in Treetop. Yeah, we're already over here again, like, that's how faster it is than Treetop was, but yeah. 
basically what we have to do is make our way up here quickly before these guys can get awakened and make our way to the top where the wizard uh, not the wizard but ah where the, the gene do, 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 do. oh come on and also that happens so yeah to get to the ferry okay all right that should disable them yep okay you have to make it up to the top because as you saw uh, that one at the top will block you so kind of sucks but we made it stupid wizard Now I think this fairy gives you a longer lasting flame breath, but don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure it could be the case just because different colour, so kind of would only feel natural that it would give you more uh, time, but I don't know. That's just a wild guess. I don't know if we got all the gems, but let's see. No, no, nope. Uh, we're missing a little under 50, but still. Yeah, it definitely lasts longer. I'll get that chain, get that breath back. So I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. Ugh. Okay, I'm, convi I'm really convinced that it's not going to run out anytime soon, so screw it. <laughs> I don't even need to do that, so let's go back here. And this should be it. Uh. Yep. Awesome. So now I can exit this place. Oh jeez. 